All right, we're gonna look at graphene secants and cosecants. And the thing you have to remember is that they're reciprocal functions. So for example, um, we could start with cosecant of theta. Um, that's a reciprocal of sine of theta. So the graphs are related, um, but the only issue we have is that anytime the sine equals zero, we're gonna get one over zero, which is undefined, which means we're gonna get asymptotes. We're gonna get things where um, the function gets really close to a value, but it can't cross it because it's undefined at that point. All right, so let's look at um, the typical, uh, let's see, what are we doing first here? Cosecant, let's look at the typical sine function and we'll go from there. All right, so again, a typical sine function would be zero pi over two pi, three pi over two and two pi for the angles. And then as far as the other values to get sine, um, you can either know how it looks, or you can get the y values off your unit circle. But I know it goes mid, high, mid, low, mid. So that's 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0. Now, that would be if this was the sine function. This would be beautiful. The problem is it's not a sine function. It's actually the cosecant function. So that means that after you put in your angle, that part's fine. You're going to get this output, but this function is now telling you to reciprocate that. All right. Um, so we're going to flip um, all of those values. All right. So this one was zero. All right. But now it's going to be one over zero. This one was one, which is going to be one over one. This is going to get flipped to one over zero. A uh, reciprocal of this would be negative one over one, and the reciprocal of this is one over zero. So we're going to take our traditional output, and we're basically, you know, going to flip it. And again, you could put the negative down here just as long as you have one negative, you're going to be good. So basically, this is going to be undefined, one, undefined, negative one, undefined. All right. So how in the world does that help us graph? All right. So let's make our, you know, typical thing here. This is one, this is negative one. And then we have our little tick marks here. All right, so say we have our pi over two, um, pi, three pi over two, two pi. And then of course we could keep going. All right, so our typical sine function is, all right, that we would start what? Mid, and low and mid. Okay. Okay, that's just one period of our traditional sine function. All right, so our new function um, is going to be undefined, unfortunately, quite a bit. Um, so it's going to be undefined at zero. So I'm going to put an asymptote here. All right. Um, it's going to be undefined at pi. So I'm going to put another asymptote there. And it's going to be defined at 2 pi. So it looks like every single time, any iteration of pi, it's going to be undefined. So if I even took this graph, I don't know why it falls just so thick. But if I go out here, this would be what? Um, 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2. This would be what? 5 pi over 2. And then over here, it's kind of off the screen, would be 6 pi over 2, which is 3 pi. There would be another um, asymptote right there all right so every time we hit that we are going to definitely be having an asymptote okay so then you're like all right what does that mean well for one thing um between these two we're going to have a function between these two between these two um but they're not going to cross and where are they going to be well it's a reciprocal function and so um this is the local max right here. That's actually going to be your local min for the other guy. And the cool thing about this is it's going to go here and go here. And you're good to go. All right. And if you think at pi over 4 is what? Um, square root of 2 over 2. If you reciprocate that, you're going to get what? 2 over radical 2. Clear the radical. You're going to end up with um, basically the square root of 2, which is about 1.4. So at this mark, you know, you should be at about 1.4, but again, you know, I'm not worried too much about that. So this local min, same thing, it's going to be a local max for that area. And if I kept going, go back to my block here. 
So this is at, where is it? So it went mid, low, mid. So here it's going to go to high. And it's going to go back to mid. My traditional one. All right, so then mine is going to go there. Go towards infinity that way. Oh, do not cross though. All right, so I need to erase just a tad because I got a little out of control there. But that would you know, get really close there. All right, and that's the cool thing. That's how you graph a cosecant function. And um, we'll look at uh, secant in just a second.